lunch is over and we're now back on the job. During the lunch break, I took the time to change the water pump. And the reason I decided to do it during the lunch break is I've already done a video on changing the water pump. And so I wanted to save some time on this video um, just so we can uh, knock it down a little bit. You don't want to spend six hours sitting in front of a video learning how to do this job. Now Vince is a wise man. He's decided to not just replace the cam belt as per the video request that he put in, but to change the entire belt kit. So the belt kit comprises of the belt itself, a new tensioner, a new tensioner pulley, and a new idler pulley. Now the difference in price these days is so minimal it would be foolish not to change the whole lot together. Oh, I'm sorry, the water pump as well comes as part of the kit. Ten years ago in this country, you probably would have paid five, six hundred pounds for that kit. Now you can buy it for around 150 pounds, 180 pounds, somewhere around there. And realistically, for such a big job, it's worth buying those extra couple of parts to save heartache in the future of having to rip the whole lot apart again just to change your 12, 15 pound pulley. So, with the water pump already changed, that video is going to be part two. And now, moving on to the reassembly, we're going to change these other two pulleys. And for that job, Vince is going to get involved. He's going to get a bit more blood on his knuckles, just like I've got today. And he's going to change the next two pulleys for us. So, over to you, Vince. The first one he's going to change is this idle pulley back here. It's a 14mm bolt through the middle. You simply unbolt it. Do we need to lock it in any, in any way or just uh, the bolt is Just as you got it, okay. yeah. Right. He's going to just unbolt that pulley and replace it with a new one. Come on, put some muscle into it. Is it that tight? Okay. Yep, knuckles. One's done. <laughs> one on. I just want to show you this pulley. This isn't the worst I've seen. Uh, in fact I did put some aside to show you. But you can see because these water pumps been leaking all the water's been spraying up onto the pulley and it's caused this rust and it's actually quite a rough surface. And that rough surface causes your belt to get shredded up a bit, weakens the belt, it causes vibration and noise and uh, it, it's just not a nice experience. So it's always wise to change these unless they're perfect condition. Uh, you need a torque wrench, which is there, which I said I would set for you and I forgot. And this one doesn't go low enough, so you need the medium one. And you need that set for everyone's benefit. You need to set this for 50 newton meters. like so and then we need a 14 millimeter bit to go on the end and I can't remember where we put it 14 millimeter do you need the extension Probably easier to use that one just to screw it in by hand. Oh, yeah, oh you've I already got it. Oh, well done. Yeah. Would that reach? Just 
I've have. got an extension if there's not enough for each. And you want it till it just clicks. And there you go. That's the first one done. Now the next pulley. The next one is your tensioner pulley, which is this one here. Again, a 14 millimeter bolt in the middle. Uh, just use a normal ratchet to undo them. Which, where did that go? No, not that one. Uh, uh, the one that you used. Ah, over there. No, this one. With that. Just in case it's too tight. It should be loose, yeah. So now keep on doing. That's okay. We could be, yeah, push down. Yeah, you know, it's pushing into the water pump. It's fine. Is it? Okay. Ah. This Okay, with the pulley that's just been removed, the replacement one, you've got to remember to put the right way round. If you look on one side, we've just got a single hole through the middle. On the other side, we have some eyes. It's important to have the eyes facing you because they're for the special tensioning tool. So it'll go in this way round. And initially, you're not going to do the bolt up tight. You're just going to do it a tight finger tight so that we can still adjust it to get the tension right. I think it's nice. Okay. And then finally we have the tensioner. So that's this device here. This is a hydraulic tensioner that has a very high pressure behind it. If you pull this pin out, the uh, center part of it is going to fly out under high pressure. You don't want that to happen. I get a lot of people complaining about these, saying that they tried to fit it and it broke and oil's coming out and all sorts of things. The reason for that is they took the pin out at the wrong time. It allowed the center piston to come out then they've put the thing in the vise and they've done the vise up as quick as they can and the pressure inside is so high that it's burst the seal on the outside. You must never ever do these up quickly in a vise. Ideally, you should never need to do them up at all. But if you're going to do it because you've accidentally pulled that pin out, you put it in the vise, you take it to its tightest point and then you stop and you leave it for a few seconds. Then you do the vice up a touch more till it's really tight again. Leave it a few seconds, a bit more, and you're very, very slowly, it could take you two or three minutes to get back that back to its position where you can put the pin in. If it takes three minutes, if it takes three hours, take your time and you won't damage the piston. So this has got to go back in. I don't know where we put the other bolt. Did you... Uh See where we put this one? Mm -hmm. Aha! So when we put this in, it's going this way round. It's not uncommon to have these uh, tensioners turn up with the pin facing the wrong way round. Don't be surprised if that happens. It's not a problem. You just put it in the vise just enough to take up the tension so that pin slides out easily. Put it in the right way round, slide it back in, take it out of the vise, and the normal tension will be uh, put back as it should be. So now this is for Vince to put in. That goes that way round into these two holes down here. And I'm going to hold this bearing out the way, this pulley out the way, while you put that in. Okay, 
just finger type for now. Okay, just look up the tension for that. Right, the co correct tension for the two bolts that hold in the tensioner is 24 Newton meters. Is that not 14? It's 14. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely big. It's oh. 12. Must be a 12. Here we go. Now we move on to the fun part of the job and the part that you've all been waiting for. Now this is my most hated part because this can either go really really well or really really horrible and you have to do it again and again and again until you get it right. We've got to line up all the timing marks, we've got to keep them in position while we put on a belt, then we've got to tighten the belt. But when you tighten up the tensioner it tends to make one of the pulleys move. And if you're not holding it all in place at the right time, you'll need to redo it again. And this is where it helps if you've got three, four, five or ten hands. The more hands, the better. Problem is, there's not enough space for all those hands. So this is now going to be a real fun act. Let's start with the bottom pulley. The bottom pulley is right on your crankshaft down here. And if I show you a close up of that pulley, you're going to see you've got a little pin sticking out here. If you follow that pin along, at the other end you've got a little notch cut out of the plate at the back. And that is the top dead centre mark for the crankshaft. So if you then transfer this onto the car, oops, sorry, not enough space, here's your pin and follow it along and you'll see a timing mark at the end and that timing mark which I can't quite see oh yeah lines up with this rod here or this little bar of metal you need to make sure that's all in line to start with that's only our starting point because now what you have to do is turn the crankshaft anti-clockwise one tooth which I can't do by hand just let me get a socket of some sort even that bar will do. Do you want to just point out that the metal piece sticking out, uh, you've painted white for extra clarity. Did the, I? It is, yeah. Uh, it shouldn't be there. No, Not no, no. One. The bit on the block. Right. This you one here? that white. Yeah, I painted it white just so it's nice and clear. And it's going to line up with a tooth directly in front of this pin. Now we're going to turn it one tooth anti-clockwise like so now we're ready to start with the top timing marks so if we come up the top these two if you recall we set using the spanners to hold them in place so there's your little indentation which I've marked in white for clarity you follow that tooth along and it should line up with this arrow that someone's marked for clarity already. Then the same on this one, the little white dot, follow it along, lines up with the arrow marked in the, the head there. And there's the same on the back. Little white dot. Now these ones are not spring loaded at this point, so you can move them by hand and it doesn't matter where they are right now, as long as they're pretty close to the arrows where they need to be. Now we move on to the next part of putting on the belt. Now your new belt will come with some arrows on it. 
and you need to make sure those arrows are pointing towards the cab of the car. Your starting point is this cam here. Then number two, then you go down to your water pump, number three. Up to this cam, number four. The cam over the back is number five. Down to this idler pulley is number six. Then down to your crankshaft pulley, number seven. Then around your tensioner pulley, number eight. And back up to cam number one. Now, when you're doing all this, you've got a huge amount of belt going around a huge number of items. all the bulldog clips are for. Have a handful of those ready. Get your arrows the right way round. Drop your belt roughly into place. And you're going to start off with that first pulley. Make sure the belt slides through this guide here. And sit it nice and evenly on top of your cam pulley at the top with equal spacing either side. Now what we're going to do is to hold that in place we're going to put a bulldog clip on there. And I like to put a second one at the top here because we're now going straight across to the next cam pulley. Now keeping your arrows directly in line and that one on that side is a fraction out, there we go. If those are exactly in line, all of your teeth should drop into place perfectly. So now we can put a second clip on there, or a third clip I should say. And now we're going to bring the belt down to your water pump. And again, I'll shove another bulldog on there, just to help us. Now I've got a little bit of grease on my hands, I just want to wipe this off, just give us a second. Now we're going to go up, after going around the water pump, to the next cam. Now at this point I'm not going to sit it on there properly, I just want to get the back one into position. I've got limited space to get in here. Right, so it's roughly in position. Now we've got to make sure the tooth with that marking on lines up exactly with the arrow. Now for this I need to get into a place where the cameraman wants to be, so he's going to have to move. It's really important we get this just right. Keep the belt really, really tight. And all the teeth should drop exactly into place. And that one there. What I find rather curious on this car is that doesn't pull the belt tight. And that one's too tight. Just let me check again here. Whoops! Now that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. Okay, we're going to have to start again. So the method we just tried was using the spanners to hold the two cams in place. This is a method that's shown in the manual and I've seen other people use it successfully. I've also seen many other people use it with a lot of swearing. For me the problem was the spanners are in the way and you risk knocking it off the small bolt in the middle at any time while you're trying to work in this very narrow space. I'm now going to return to the method that I prefer which is using some bolts through the gaps here and a couple of socket pieces just to take up the gap. This gives me a nice tight uh, grip on the uh, cams. I'm not bolting into the cams in any way at all, so I'm not going to be bending them. It just locks them into place without buying any specialist tools at all. So we'll go back to square one. Make sure your first timing mark's in place and get yourself a couple of bulldogs to hold the belt to stop it moving. 
then you move across to your second one okay making sure your timing marks are in place this is just a fraction off on this one nice and tight locks into there and again we'll have another clip to hold that now we go around the water pump keep the belt tight all the time if the belt's not tight then you'll find that the next teeth won't line up so cam number three so we're a fraction out and there about as close as it's going to get. Now we go down to the four. Pull the belt through. Make sure your next timing mark is all lined up. Just find the position that gets you the nearest to where you need to be. If I go one more tooth over, it's too far out, so I think, no, I think I want to come one tooth back. Always get as close to the actual timing mark as possible. look as close as it wants to go but it doesn't quite feel like it's accurate enough I'm going to come back one can I just get in there a second I think I feel more comfortable with that one it's about half a tooth out but it's as close as it wants to go now for the next one you've got your idler pulley just here And then it'll be going down to the bottom so I'm just going to push it down there now from this point all I'm going to do is try and stick a couple of bulldog clips up the top here and one down the back as far as I can get if I can get to hold that in position and now we should be able to let go of all the top ones to concentrate on the bottom one now it starts to get really horrible okay now we're on to the bottom crankshaft pulley now this one is getting towards the end so the belt's going to start getting a bit tight you've got to slide it into position around the bottom pulley and then fold it up so it goes around the tensioner now get it into position the best you can but you're going to find that there's still a little bit of slack left where you've taken it from now if you can't quite get round the tensioner pulley grab yourself a pair of circlips and those two eyes that I told you about turn them anti-clockwise and it will give you a lot more slack to work with I'm going to take that back off a second get into those two eyes turn it anti-clockwise so it's now a sideways smile now we'll get back on here again now we can get it onto the tensioner I think yeah I just want to get as much slack out of that as possible so that's on there now and while we're still holding it with our fingers We'll turn that smiley face back up the right way. And believe me, there's nothing to smile about on this job. I think maybe they put those bits in there as a joke. 
So as we turn the smiley face back upright, that uh, brings the belt tighter. And we'll pause there, ready for the next bit. Okay, with the belt all now in position and all the teeth hope hopefully lined up, we're now going to tighten this centre um, tensioner pulley just enough to do the provisional tests. So to do this, I'm using a circlip plier in the two eye holes of the pulley. I've got vents underneath with a 14 millimeter spanner through the bolt in the middle. I'm going to turn the circlip pliers until we've got good tension on the belt. And now Vince can tighten up that centre bolt. And he's going to do it reasonably tight, but not very tight, just enough to lock it into place. So when I remove the circlip pliers, it holds that position. At this point, we're now ready for the provisional checking of everything being in alignment. So we're going to start by removing all of the bulldog clips. If you use the cam locking tool, now's the time to remove it. If you use the spanner method, now's the time to remove it. For me, I'm going to remove the parts that I fitted. Right, just to double check, make sure all of the locking mechanisms are now removed. Now we go down to the bottom of the car. From below, we now need to ro rotate the crankshaft, but that's not so easy to do without a method of turning it. What we're gonna do is put the crankshaft pulley back on. Now, if you remember, there's a pin that sticks out the side of the inner pulley. That has to line up with the hole on the outer pulley. Should have cleaned this up first, shouldn't I? <laughs> there we go. Just stick the bolt in temporarily to hold it. You've not got to do it up tight, just enough to make sure it doesn't come off. Now we're going to use the pull pulley locking tool. And we're going to get it on there and turn the crankshaft one quarter turn counterclockwise. Once we've gone counterclockwise quarter of a turn, you'll feel the tension start to build up with the pressure in the engine. Now we're going to bring it back up again, clockwise, until all the timing marks are lined up again, starting with number one. Then number two. If you're lucky, every single timing mark will be lined up and you'll be ready for the next stage of the job. Number three number four and hopefully the crankshaft pulley is also in alignment now but to find out 
we need to remove this pulley again because the timing mark is behind it. The next one is half a tooth out, not even half a tooth, a third of a tooth, which is as close as we're going to get because whichever way I move it, I'm never going to get closer than that. So the reason we started with this one tooth off is so it could take up the tension on the belt on this side, while the tensioner took up the tension of the belt on the other side. So all the teeth are now in place. We now know all the timing marks are right. We can move on to the next stage. Now we're gonna move on to what is probably the most tricky part of the process. I've got a torque wrench set to 10 Newton meters and I've got the proper Mitsubishi tool on the end of it. Underneath, I've got Vince with a 14 millimeter spanner, which is on the center bolt of the tensioning pulley. I'm gonna set this tool to do up and I'm going to put it through the two eyes on the tensioning pulley, like so. Now I'm just going to take up the tension slightly and I'm going to ask Vince to loosen the centre bolt. Okay, that, that enough? Be. That should be enough. Now I'm going to apply 10 Newton metres of pressure while Vince does the bolt back up. Now when he tries, yep, when he tries to do that up, the centre pulley is going to want to move, so you've got to hold it to stop it moving. Is that done up? Yep. Now if I'm this... Probably. I can... Yeah, you don't need it rock, rock hard, okay. just, you know, just nip it up for now. If this has all gone well, this centre pin should pull out, which it doesn't. So something's a little too tight or a little too loose. So I'll get Vince to loosen that very slightly again, until we feel this go loose Keep going. Uh, it's just starting to get loose now out a bit more a little bit more okay hold it just there right now we've gone a bit the other way so now I'll apply the pressure again it takes a second or two to go in We've got to get this just right so that's loose. Is that loosened off, Vince? That should pull out. Is that centre bolt definitely loose? No, that should be enough now. It's just down to me to get that tension just right. Ah, there we go, it's just starting to move. Okay, there. So we'll let it settle a little bit. <laughs> Still not enough. Okay, tighten that up, Vince. Okay, I felt that tighten up a bit too much then. Okay, it's just enough to move. Is that tight, Vince? Well, I think I can still go. Okay. Now it's from here. 
yeah I could feel the whole engine move so that's certainly tight enough okay now we can remove the tools okay now if we've got the tension just right this pin should be nice and loose now just before we move on to the next step I just wanted to explain that special tool that Mitsubishi provide I actually find to be a real pain now although we can't measure 10 newton meters using a pair of circlet pliers we know that 10 newton meters should be just the right tension to allow us to get that so it's loose so you can do exactly the same process putting your circlet pliers in the two holes getting someone else underneath with the spanner in the hole boy and all you do is push on your circlet pliers in a clockwise direction moving it till you get the tension just right for that pin to move in and out as soon as that tension is just right get the person at the bottom to do up the bolt and then you can remove the tools at that point if you're happy that it's all in place and that is fairly loose you can pull that out and then we're ready for the next part now we're back to the bottom of the car again the next part of the process is to turn the engine two full turns and then leave it to settle to make sure everything is set right and that the tension is right so to turn it we're going to need to put the crankshaft pulley back on sorry in there Okay, we're ready to start on the turn. Two full revolutions. Um, I think I'll do it at the crankshaft end from my point, but you can film it from up the top, it makes no difference. Now, depending on how much compression your engine's got, there's going to be a number of points in the cycle where the pressure builds up and you really have to give it your all to turn the engine. This is perfectly normal as long as it doesn't lock hard on anything. And as long as you've got your timing right, this should all turn without any problems. Is that the first or the second turn? Got one more time. And now we're bringing up that final time and check that all the timing marks are still spot on. One, two, three, four. And the bottom one I know will be right. See, we've got this little marker just there. You see where the pin yep. comes through? Yeah, it's technically we should take the pulley off to uh, check it, but I know that that one will be correct because it was correct when we uh, tried it earlier and we've not moved the belt in any way at all. So all we're doing now is letting it settle for five minutes while the tensioner moves into position, relaxed position. We'll do one final check and then we're ready for reassembly. So five minutes have passed and now it's time for us to do our final checks before we put the whole thing back together. In order to do the final checks, I've removed the bottom pulley again. It purely enables us to check all the timing marks still line up, which they do. And also you're going to need your uh, tensioner pin again. If you come over here with a camera, I'm hoping this all goes right because this is the last test. This should go back in the hole. Yes, it does. 
So that means you're 100% on. However, it doesn't have to be 100%. There is a certain element of tolerance between 3.8 and 4.5 millimeters gap between the tensioner and the tensioner piston. So, this gap here, the amount of piston showing should be 3.8 to 4.5 millimeters. And as long as you're within that gap, then you're set fine, even if the pin doesn't go in perfectly, which in this case it does. So we're 100% on. Just one final thing I've got to set. The uh, center bolt through the pulley should be set to 48 Newton meters just to make sure it's done up tightly enough. Which is pretty darn tight. So there we go. That's uh, all set fine. So that's the cam belt back on. Now ordinarily, because the video was just to fit a cam belt, I'd now say it's done and leave you to put the rest of it back together. But we're not going to do that with this video. It is a competition video. I'm not going to leave Vince to do the rest of his car on his own. We're going to complete the rest of the assembly, the whole thing on video for you to see, um, including some other new parts fitting on. Vince wants to clean up a few bits. So it's all wonderful when he leaves and he's not got to worry about it for another 60,000 miles. So at this point, I'm going to leave the video while Vince cleans up and then we'll uh, start with the rest of the reassembly process. So now we're going to start on the reassembly. Now Vince is going to take on most of this job himself, starting with the cam belt cover. Just remember when you put this back together on this particular version, and there's more than one version, this particular version has eight bolts. One of the bolts is longer than all the others. It goes in here. And don't forget the bolt right down the back that all the garages tend to leave out. I'll pass this up from underneath. It's easier to go from underneath to get it in and then I'm going to leave Vince to reassemble. I've got the bolts here, Vince. I need two of them. Whoops. Can you take the rest? I'll take these two. going the wrong way around. This is the bottom here Vince, this piece. Yeah, that's so right. that's round that way. Can you see what it's catching on there? Feels like it's catching. Oh, there we go.
Okay, just a quick tip for when you put this back together. All of the bolts, for those of you that are lucky enough to have a uh, torque wrench, need to be set for 10 Newton meters. That's not very tight at all, just a little nip up and they'll be fine. Uh, yes, I thought I gave it to you actually. Crankshaft pulley, next one on. Remember that you've got this little identification pin here, which lines up with a little hole in there. I can just see in there a second without the camera. Yep, that's lined up. Big bolt. And some tools. Now it's time to get the muscles out. 180 newton meters of pressure to do this up. That's an immense pressure. And we know that from when Vince tried to undo it. Damn tool slipped that time. Yeah, Vince, could you do this up for us, please? For God's sake, don't break my knees. Upwards? <laughs> uh, no, downwards, push down. That was set right. Oh. It only has to click once. Did it click? Was that it? No, I'm not sure if it clicked. I thought it did. I thought it did. I can't believe we'll need to go any harder than that. That's done up. And it's done up tight, really tight. Next one, power steering pump tensioner. Start off with the long bolt. Makes things a lot easier to get into a very, very small gap. Absolutely hate this one. Yeah, I don't think you can actually film anything in there, it's just such a tiny, tiny gap.
go. Then we have another bolt. If you've got children, this is where you need your kids to be. I'm about to drop it. Maybe I'll have a go at this from underneath. What a silly, silly place to put it. I don't think you need to film this bit. Oh yeah, this is easier from underneath. Much, much easier. Okay, time for the power steering belt. Guide it in. Over the two back pulleys. And then hopefully over the front one. In fact, we might have to do the front one first because it's not enough to get otherwise. And Fintz could guide it over the back one. Is it on the back one? Yeah. And then finally the tensioner one. Now what we're going to do is use a half inch drive extension bar. We're going to slot it into that gap there. and then tilt it upwards. When we have approximately 10 millimeters of deflection here in either direction, now Vince can tighten it up. How hard? Uh, that'll do for now. And then there's another bolt just above that one, which also needs to be tightened up. Can you reach that one? I'll guide you on it. No? In that case, we'll use the extension spanner. Uh, the uh, long body spanner to get to that one from here. No, can I have that spanner, Vince? Thank you. These little ratchet spanners are a brilliant idea. Hold that for us. Okay, that's that one. So that was a really difficult place to film. So just so you can see what we're doing, I've decided to do it on this engine as well. We're going to need to get a half inch extension bar, put it into there. We're going to push up on it. So we've got 10 millimetres of movement here. When you get 10 millimetres, you tighten it up. First one. Then the other. Built nice and tight. Job done. Let's look at what's next. Now we're on to the Chinese puzzle this lovely old chunk of iron that we've got to squeeze into a gap that's half the size. I'm not promising I'll get this first time, or second time, or third. But there is a technique, if you get it right, for it to drop in. I just wish I knew what the technique was.
that last little bit over there. Ah, there we go. It literally does drop straight in once you get it bright. Like so. Now we have five bolts. I don't think you can get any of these wrong because they're all different sizes and different threads. Get each of them in finger tight and then we'll go for the final tensioning. right at the bottom. Whoops, well I dropped that one so we'll go for the next one which is somewhere hidden around the top there. Sorry, I need to come around there. Okay, they're all done finger tight. I'm just going to go a little bit beyond finger tight. If I can find certain spanners. That's a 14 millimeter ratchet spanner gone. I'm not going to do these up tight. I'm just going to do them tight enough to pull it into position, ready for tensioning. If you give me a second, I'll get all the torque settings and we'll set it all up. Now there's five bolts that hold this block of metal to the side of the engine. The five bolts have to be done up in a specific sequence and a specific torque. This bolt here is bolt number one and that has a torque setting of 65 newton meters. Bolts number two and three are these two down here. Those are 42 newton meters. And they're 14 mil. Not really the best place to get a torque wrench into.
Number two. Next one is bolt number three. Bolt number three is the bottom one of the two that remain. 17 millimeter and that is set to 65 again and one final bolt set for 105 newton meters Next up, the alternator. Yet another piece of Chinese jigsaw. No, Chinese puzzle, that's it. First of all, we're going to get the arm down, hopefully. I'll bring the alternator up, one or the other. If you recall, we had to get that bolt right at the bottom first, which was really difficult to get to. A bit of twisting and jiggling, and there's a way of turning this up so we can get to that bottom one. I'm sure we had a better angle than that last time. Nightmare. So we need a bolt in there. That goes in right down the bottom now. Right, this bottom bolt here is proving to be a bit difficult, so we're just experimenting with different ways of getting that in. The alternator becomes heavy when you've been playing with it for a little while. So what I've done is bolted the main bracket in, and uh, in the hope that the alternator will now line up better with this bolt down the bottom. going in. Let's try from below I think. With that tricky bolt finally in place, we ended up using someone with smaller fingers. We can now get in this large one here, and these two back in over here. And you don't need to watch me doing up some bolts, so I'll uh, come back to you in a minute. Next one is your 100 millimeter idler pulley. That's going up in there. And I might need someone with small hands again. Oh no, hold on. Next one, two bolts holding the cooling lines for the power steering. One in there. And one down in there. Next is the alternator belt. Slide it down into position.
you're going over the top of the alternator underneath the idler around the outside of the alternator around the outside of the crankshaft pulley and all of those are nicely into position you should be able to get over the top of the tensioner pulley like so now we're going to start doing up this top bolt here And we're going to do up this bottom one, but not tight at this point. There's my tools. Uh, just a second, I did have some tools, I've got to go and find them now. You're going to do up this one in the middle here, just so it doesn't wobble around too much. And wait. Better. Now we're going to start doing up that top one again, just in here. And we're looking for a deflection here of about five millimeters. So at the moment we've got a lot of slack, so we'll do that up. Still quite a lot. Nearly there. That feels pretty good. And then we can tighten up this bottom one. Okay. Engine mount. Don't forget if you've had these rubbers off, when you put them back on, the arrows point to the outside of the car. Slide into position. And if nothing's moved, they'll drop down into place. Like so. Three washers. Three nuts. Now we have this, it only goes one way round. The engine's lowered just slightly, so I'll just bring that up a touch. One side, one washer, one nut. On the other side, just two nuts. And now you can tighten all that down. Tighten up your side bolts, 35 newton meters. side ah, this 
socket piece isn't deep enough. Do we have a long body one? What's that? Engine bolts. 100 to 110 newton meters. And while we're up the top here, we could put in the cruise control module. Don't you need to put the cam covers on first because of the cables mm -hmm. running over it. You know you could be right on that back one. I think it might be easier. That's in front of these back. <laughs> it would be the wrong one. You got that back one there Vince? Just hope it goes in a bit easier than it came out. At this point, we've put the cam covers back on. We're about to uh, put in the uh, cruise control module, remove the engine support beam, and any other minor ancillary parts will bolt back into place. So here we go for the first start after the rebuild. Vince's face. Let's see how it goes. There we go. I have to say there was a sigh of relief despite the fact I've never ever had a problem with this. When you do such a big job, it's always that immediate fear of what if I forgot something. So thankfully it all started fine and I believe it sounds a lot sweeter than it did when you drove it in. Uh, we've got some new pulleys on there, it's all been cleaned up, new belts. Um, at this point, I think we're going to call the video to an end. <laughs> All that's left to do now is a couple of the engine covers underneath that you see us taking off and I've covered in countless other videos. So it's coming to the end of the day. I'm going to say thanks to Vince for trusting me with his car. Thank you, for entering the competition. Thank you for the job. <laughs> He's saved. Pricing is easy, but doing a job, that's, uh, that takes time. Um, it's not the easy job some people think it is, but hopefully with this video you'll be able to do the job yourself at home. Um, using perhaps not as many tools of wheels as we've used uh, but getting the job done all the same so Vince has saved a lot of money we've had a good day's filming hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the next video